This is part two of my aeroplanes and paramotors compared video. If you haven't watched part one, you should probably do that first. Please don't take any of the figures that I give in this section of the video as gospel. They are just very rough estimates. Aeroplanes have a lot more freedom in where they can go than what paramotors do. Aeroplanes are able to fly anywhere except in restricted airspace, while paramotors are restricted from flying in controlled airspace as well as restricted areas. This means that a lot of areas are out of bounds for paramotors. You don't tend to find controlled airspace out in the countryside, so there's plenty of places you can fly if you're out in the country, but if you're in a more urban area where there's a major airport nearby, you have no chance of flying. Aeroplanes are generally subject to strict maintenance schedules and they're very reliable. They can have motor failures and other problems, but it's pretty unlikely. Uh, paramotors, on the other hand, are very subject to engine failures. Propellers are prone to braking, spark plugs foul up, various other things go wrong. Yeah, you can't rely on the propulsion of the paramotor like you can an aeroplane. However, they're not inherently dangerous because of this. Paramotors glide perfectly well unpowered. So let's have a talk about the kind of coin that's involved. Aeroplanes are a lot more expensive than paramotors. It is one of the big differences. Check out this 1978 Piper Tomahawk, $85,000. It's a very basic aircraft, little two-seater. Uh, I trained in them. Of course, you can hire an aeroplane instead of buying one, which a lot of people opt for. I just spoke to a pilot recently. A basic Cessna 172 is renting out for nearly $300 an hour. But if you owned it, you might be able to bring your price down to $200 an hour, thereabouts. Paramotors are actually a bunch of different parts that you purchase and you put together. You've got your harness and frame, your motor, your prop, your wing, your helmet, your reserve, and so on. This means that you can create essentially very different aircraft and flying characteristics by mixing and matching parts. I have a good quality but fairly low cost second hand unit and all up it cost me about $8,000. If you want to buy a new unit you're looking at somewhere between fifteen dollars and $30,000. I'd estimate the ongoing operating cost of a paramotor at around $40 an hour. Could be a fair bit more or a fair bit less depending on how much goes wrong. Um, paramotors are prone to having a lot of problems with the people I know that fly them. Most of them have problems with them, things breaking that they have to spend a lot of money on fixing and often end up having a lot of downtime. Aeroplanes have good long longevity. You buy an aeroplane, it's going to last. There's aeroplanes for sale here that are a lot older than me. Um, paramotors don't seem to last. I very rarely see them for sale with more than three to 400 hours on them. The wings are basically expendable. They last between three and 500 hours. The carbon fiber propellers break very easily. They're a pusher propeller, so anything that kicks up or falls off you goes straight through it and breaks it. You've also got to think about storage costs. Aeroplanes are generally stored at airports or airstrips, either out in the open or ideally in a hangar, and that can get expensive. In contrast, my paramotor weighs 22 kilos, folds down into a tiny little box, and that uh, blue bag just sitting on the left there is the wing. That's all it is. Very easy to store and transport. So let's just do some quick and dirty uh, price comparisons. Let's say we buy a new aeroplane for about $800,000, a Cessna 172, and I know it needs a major overhaul at 100,000 hours, and let's say it dies at that 100,000 hours. Um, that brings us in at $8 a flight hour for the cost of the purchasing the aircraft. So the purchase price is quite high, but it's also quite reasonable considering how long the aircraft lasts. Comparing that to a paramotor, let's say we have a $15,000 unit uh, and we get 500 hours out of it, uh, that works out to $30 per hour based on purchase price. So even though the paramotor is a lot cheaper, you get a lot less hours of flight time for the money that you invest. The aeroplane comes in as a much more reasonable purchase at $8 per flight hour for the purchase price versus $30 for the paramotor per flight hour. The paramotor really wins out in the hourly operating cost. And by that I'm talking about fuel, servicing, and all the expenses that just go into operating the aircraft. $40 an hour for the paramotor versus $200 an hour for the aeroplane. But let's look at the price in terms of distance covered instead of flight time. 
Now these are just quick and dirty calculations. Uh, my paraboater cruises at around 40 kilometers an hour, while a Cessna 172 cruises at about 230 kilometers an hour. That brings the Cessna in at 86 cents a kilometer, and the paramotor at $1 per kilometer. If we include cost per hour from the purchase price, the Cessna comes in at 90 cents per kilometer, and the paramotor at $1.75 per kilometer. So if you want to go somewhere, you definitely want the aeroplane, not the paramotor. It's also a much nicer aircraft to travel around in. Flying a paramotor in Australia requires a powered paraglider certification, which will cost somewhere between four and five thousand dollars. And to fly a light aeroplane, you're going to need a recreational pilot's license, which will cost around twelve to thirteen thousand dollars. But your recreational pilot's license will be pretty restrictive. So it might be a good idea to go for the full private pilot's license, which will be around $25,000. There are a few hacks you can use to bring that price down a lot cheaper. When I was going for my private pilot's license, I actually started on sailplanes, because all the hours you do on sailplanes counts towards your private pilot's license, and they are significantly cheaper to fly. For the paramotor, instead of getting a powered paraglider certification, I instead got a paragliding certification. I was unable to do a much shorter and cheaper paramotor endorsement because I already had most of the required skills. Unfortunately, the two different kinds of flying do not recognize each other. My flying experience and qualifications as a private pilot did not count at all when I went to learn how to fly paramotors. And conversely, experience flying paramotors does not count towards general aviation. Paramotor training can be much more frustrating than learning to fly fixed wing aeroplanes, simply because you can't fly most of the time. The weather has to be perfect. There is a significant amount of physical skill needed to successfully launch and fly a paramotor. It's more like a sport, whereas flying an aeroplane is more like driving a car. A pilot's license is very theoretical. You'll have a lot of information crammed into your head, a lot more than if you're doing a paramotor certification. I choose to fly paramotors and paragliders at the moment because they really suit my lifestyle. I'm an adventure bum living on a fairly low income these days, so I can't really afford to fly aeroplanes. I do a lot of caravanning, and if I pull up somewhere and the weather's good, I can get the paramotor out and go for a squirt and enjoy the view. I haven't gone into a huge amount of detail in this video for time constraint reasons. In fact, everything's been pretty much boiled down to its essence. So if anyone's getting excited saying I've skipped a whole bunch of things, uh, yeah, you're right, I have. Just the basic differences from my perspective. Uh, feel free to add your comments below. This beautiful drone footage is by Heath from YP Drones. Uh, he does quite a good job, so if you're on York Peninsula, and you want some drone footage, look him up, link in the description. If you found this interesting or useful, please give us a like and a sub. Thanks for watching.